Finally, Tesla is making a move that we have been asking for months and it's moving people from version 11 FSD to V12. Just weeks ago, this number was close to 50%. Now it has dropped to 21-ish percent. Yeah, still that many people are on V11, but that number should be dropping rapidly now as this update is going out to people. Getting all the people off V11 is probably the thing that Tesla is going to do before it officially starts rolling out V12. .4. And to those trying V12 for the first time, welcome to the new world. Model Y refresh was apparently spotted and being tested at Giga Berlin. The person filming this said the headlines were slim and looked like the Model 3 refresh. The quality of this footage is really low, but you can see that this car on the left is probably a refresh Model Y and I like how it looks. Now because the quality was so low it could be some other car we don't know for sure but to me that looked like a Model Y refresh and I still think that Tesla is going to release a refresh Model Y in China first later this year and then probably the refresh in the US will be done either at the end of this year or probably in the beginning of next year. The CEO of the California Public Employees Retirement System says that they will be voting against Elon's composition package even though they voted for it in 2018. Elon Musk of course is not happy with what she's saying. What she's saying makes no sense. As all the contractual milestones were met, they are breaking their word. And they do hold quite a significant amount of Tesla shares, 9.5 million shares. Although that's only 0.29% of outstanding shares, but I mean, it adds up. It's really sad to see this happen. She said she voted for the compensation package before and she didn't feel tricked. So why vote no? Just like how less than 30% of the people watching my channel are not subscribed. What's going on, people? Please subscribe if you haven't yet. But do you believe you were duped in 2018? No. I can't stand these people. I published an exclusive video on Patreon today, by the way. And Gary Black is actually making some sense here with the first few sentences. Investors who vote against Elon's 2018 compensation package in the 2024 proxy vote are not acting in the best interests of Tesla shareholders. I definitely agree with that. Unless you think Tesla is better off without Elon Musk. If investors vote no on Elon Musk's 2018 compensation package, there's a fair chance Elon leaves Tesla or redirects his enormous talents and energy to one of his other companies such as XAI. Without Elon's leadership, many of Tesla's most talented engineers will leave and efforts to get to unsupervised autonomy before competitors will stall or worse may fail he thinks i disagree that tesla would fail because tesla has so much data already it's a bit difficult not to succeed at this point tesla has millions of vehicles on the roads collecting data no one has nowhere near as much data as tesla every tesla institutional shareholder who wants tesla stock to go higher should vote for elon's 2018 pay package unless and this is just a theory i'm not saying that she's doing this but uh, if you want to signal to some of the people that you work with that, you know, Elon Musk bad, uh, yeah, then it does make sense to vote against this, even though it is certainly against your financial interests. But who cares about that? Elon bad, didn't you hear before? This programming has been quite effective. I reported about a week ago that this is likely to happen and this fund ended up voting no now the same way that they expect government pension funds to vote in the u.s now that list included union affiliated banks which sort of really helped to vote against this i mean they always would prefer to have their bosses be paid less and then be paid more even if it means that in the long term they will make less money because the company is not going to do as well who cares about that what matters is now except in this case the stock could drop even in the short term if Elon Musk decides to officially say, oh, you know what, I'm not going to focus on Tesla as much anymore, or maybe I'm stepping down. Now, some like to complain about Elon. Literally, all sorts I have talked to at Tesla told me a version of having to work around Elon being part of their jobs. As Bilbo says, sorry, I had to pause the video. Oh, that name is just too funny. It's difficult to take someone seriously with that name. It doesn't dismiss the fact that he greatly contributed to Tesla's success and saved the company on more than one occasion in the early days. And I wouldn't call the Model 3 ramp 
the early days. Elon Musk has made great contributions, but he has also gotten in the way. I want more specific stories, and I mean multiple specific stories. Supposedly managing Elon is a critical skill all good leaders in Tesla quickly learn. That's not even an option if one wants to thrive there as a leader. Just look at that post and just think how arrogantly it was written. Managing Elon as if Elon does not have a fantastic rack record showing that in the end he's right more often than not and when it really matters he's right. Managing Elon implies that one knows better than Elon, that Elon is wrong, that Elon is incompetent and therefore he needs to be managed. And of course, people that are no longer a Tesla will say things like this because yeah, they don't know how to work with Elon. Maybe they didn't work as well as Elon hoped they would. Maybe they didn't fit in. So now they are trashing Elon naturally. But I will agree with this. If you are a leader at Tesla, sure, you need to learn how to work with Elon. And after reading Walter Isaacson's biography on Elon Musk, we know that Elon does have a demon mode and you need to learn how to work with that too. And look, initially when we see these headlines, it does feel, oh, what's going on? Is there a problem? Yes, there is because he's firing people. Elon Musk went on a firing spree over slow satellite broadband progress. And you read some of these and it seemed like, oh, this is the end. He's an idiot. He needs to learn how to manage people better. If you work with Elon, you need to learn how to manage Elon. Yeah, right. Elon fired an entire team at Starlink without any warning. Sounds familiar. And what's even worse, he replaced these people with SpaceX rocket engineers that knew nothing about building satellites. What an idiot this Elon Musk guy is, right? There's one more important difference between the last team and this team. They knew how to work with Elon Musk. They agreed to work the way Elon Musk wanted them to work. And now you can actually use Starlink. I use it and it works great. Tesla now says that you can win a tour of Tesla's Giga Texas factory with Elon Musk and France if you vote your shares in the upcoming annual shareholder meeting. Well, if you haven't voted yet, this is a pretty good reason to vote. Now, what I would like to see is Leo Cogman getting <laughs> that door. Will it really be random people winning this? That sounds a bit mm, interesting because there's a good chance someone who is gonna vote no will be at the store. Well, this was impossible to predict. I mean, someone who has enough... What's the word? Stupidity? Mm, not quite right. A high idiot factor. I think that's better. Uh, someone like that. Imagine how could someone possibly have predicted that someone like that would be sued by a partner alleging misuse of funds. Of course, that doesn't prove anything yet, but uh, it's going to be interesting to see this case. Last year, Chano shut down his fund after 40 years because he was struggling to make profits due to some smart decisions like uh, shorting Tesla stock. His firm managed less than 200 million in 2023, down from 6 billion in 2008. Elon responded with interesting. It's not just that he would short Tesla. He would also push false stories about Tesla in the media who performed for him like circus poodles. You know, I usually feel bad for people when they are going through a tough time. Not in this case, not at all. But maybe he was just generally stupid. And maybe he didn't do anything wrong with uh, misusing these funds. Maybe it was just an accident. Well, the suit filed in New York State Court over the weekend involves $10 million of outstanding loans that Chanos borrowed from his company over more than a decade. It is alleged that Chanos never intended on paying the company back, but instead planned on using his power as general partner to run the company into the ground, enjoy the tax benefits of his financial shenanigans, and leave his partners with nothing. The suit also alleges that Chanos sold his luxury apartment in Miami, which was owned by Chanos & Co. for $17.8 million earlier this month without notifying his partners. If you're willing to put out false stories in the media about Tesla, I mean, why wouldn't you be willing to do this as well? Sounds like things are... In natural order, Chano's girlfriend, Crystal Connors, acted as the sales agent on the deal, which would have netted her 
$540,000 at standard commission rates according to the suit. Wow, look at her. Yeah, look at him. These two just don't match. Uh, and especially knowing that he doesn't have a good heart. Mm, we know exactly what this was all about. Allegedly. I mean, obviously, it's all because of love of money. In other words, Chainos not only sold the company's property, but did so in a way that he could pay his girlfriend more than half a million dollars of money that did not belong to him. I'm pretty sure he would do it all over again. So never short Tesla, except year to date. But that's the kind of thing shorts always say before they lose everything. Back to regular programming. Tesla sales in Europe have been fairly steady, ranging between 85,000 and 94,000 over the past six quarters. However, this this quarter is expected to be clearly less based on the registration data so far. We will have a better idea in a week when we have the May numbers for all countries. So this is Europe, but China is looking pretty good. We should expect a drop in Europe, but an increase quarter over quarter in China. James is staying at 420,000. He just increased his delivery estimate, by the way. So despite a cut in production in China, the Chinese market for Tesla is actually doing all right. But the reason why the production was cut is because of fewer exports. Well, we haven't heard much about Giga Mexico ever since Elon Musk put uh, brakes on the whole project, but we are hearing something from there now. Tesla Giga Mexico's construction is still moving forward, says Nuevo Leon Secretary of Economy. We have not had any change in signal. Communication is very close. The only thing that is not defined, you mean, you know, the thing that really matters uh, which is the most important thing is when tesla is going to start but the politician says tesla is coming so nothing really seems to have changed incentives between tesla and nuovo leon are still being discussed one way to look at it is uh this delay is probably going to get tesla a better deal but i'm not expecting any significant real progress to be made over there anytime soon right now. Tesla Giga Berlin is drawing new businesses to the area. For example, a groundbreaking ceremony was held to celebrate the construction of a large warehouse to store lithium ion batteries. It's estimated to be about the size of 14 football fields. Wow. Well, this took a long time to repair the structure that was damaged by an arson attack on March 5th and caused Tesla Giga Berlin to shut down due to lack of power. Supply has been fully repaired, but they did a quick fix, which restored electricity within six days. But only now, 84 days later, it's fully fixed. The most disappointing part is that no arrests have been made. Uh, check this out. The slowdown has been vastly exaggerated. Bloomberg now says the slowdown in the US electric vehicle sales looks more like a blip. For every sign of an EV slowdown, another suggests an adolescent industry on the verge of its next growth spurt. Duh. What else are you going to tell me? that Steven Mark Ryan is a Tesla bull. Six of the 10 biggest EV makers in the US saw sales grow at a scorching pace compared to a year ago, up anywhere from 56% at Hyundai Kia to 86% at Ford. A sampling of April sales similarly came in hot. Uh, look, Toyota sold like eight more EVs probably. <laughs> Keep in mind that Tesla was having issues with the Model 3 RAM, but now from everything that I'm hearing from private sources, the Model 3 production is really good now at this moment. Also, it's not like we haven't been through this before. Look at how consistent the growth was for quite some time but before yeah we grew here like crazy and then there was a bit of a slowdown and then we continued to grow and i think we are just going through the exact same thing right now and this uh, gives you some good insight into how much we can trust bloomberg as a source of information when it comes to them stating their opinions and maybe even facts tesla's calendar of new vehicle launches is essentially blank, apart from an aspirational Roadster supercar and a vague hint by Elon Musk last month of new vehicles, including more affordable models, coming next year. It's too soon to gauge long-term demand, pay attention, for Tesla's Cybertruck pickup which is currently only offered as a $120,000 Founders Edition. This is one of the reasons why people watch my videos, because people over at Bloomberg and at other media outlets 
uh, they don't know some simple facts. I'm going to ignore the fact for a moment that Cybertruck has over 1 million reservations. Let's look at Google Trends. Let's search for Cybertruck and let's compare it to a few other pickup trucks, the electric F-150, and then uh, let's pick another one, Ram pickup truck, which is pretty popular in the US. And uh, the blue is, um, this is where the Cybertruck launch happened. Of course, lots of hype, lots of videos, lots of attention, lots of media about it. So naturally people search for it. And then uh, my interest started dying down, except it is now coming back. It's almost like the more Cybertrucks Tesla produce, the more Cybertrucks people see on the roads, the more people ask the question, what is that? And how do you get one? And F-150 electric pickup truck? Nah, not interested in it anymore. You can see that, uh, yeah. At first, when the Cybertruck launched, it actually was beneficial for the F-150 electric pickup truck, but now, no, 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 it's a bad thing for it. I'm going to modify the search terms a little bit. We're gonna look at F-150, including the gas versions as well. And with this modification, you can see that Tesla Cybertruck, in terms of interest, is still behind the F-150 pickup truck, but boy, if this continues, it will have more interest than the most popular vehicle in the United States and is already outperforming the Ram pickup truck. And we are just getting started and you can't even buy the cheap Cybertruck yet. And here's how the interest in Cybertruck is broken down by the state. And note how the Ford F-150 is not as popular in the places that Cybertruck is, meaning potentially that Cybertruck is actually creating first-time pickup truck buyers. Back to the shrinking EV sales. The Model 3, which was the number two best-selling EV, saw sales drop 60% in March due to the switch over to the all-new Model 3. Tesla sells so many EVs that a dip in Tesla sales in the US due to a production transition makes it look like the whole industry is shrinking. And now that we have no more production problems with the Model 3 with a Cybertruck ramping, I will be enjoying the show. Kathy Wood just made a good move and grabbed some XAI. We know that XAI actually turned down money. Elon could have raised more money if he wanted to and he was able to pick and choose exactly who he wants to take money from and obviously Kathy Wood is an ally of Elon Musk so he did not turn her down. All right, PNT is reported to have signed a large order with Tesla for equipment for dry electrode processes. The contract was signed in the first quarter of this year. The first batch was signed and additional contracts more than double can be expected within this year. This is the source. I translated this from Korean. If Tesla can nail the dry manufacturing process, it will be great for Tesla. Tesla has announced plans to appear at an upcoming storage conference in Germany in the coming weeks as the company continues to ramp its energy business. The event is taking place between June 18 and 21st with 760 total exhibitors. With all of the new tariffs going on, there's a good chance that Tesla is going to have another mega pack factory built, maybe some where in Europe. Remember all the hype about the SU7 from Xiaomi? By the way, I think the vehicle looks great. Maybe it's not for everyone, but I personally like how it looks. It started off really strong and then every week, uh, pretty much less sales than the previous week, but now it's picking up again, still way behind the Model 3 though. I will try to keep an eye on this every week and compare these two. What is going on here? Elon says, this is one of the dumbest things anyone has ever said. This has to be good. Oh, it's actually like a whole debate and everything. <laughs> okay. It all started with Elon saying, join XAI if you believe in our mission of understanding the universe which requires maximally rigorous pursuit of the truth without regard to popularity or political correctness. To which this guy replied with join XAI if you can stand a boss who claims that what you are working on will be solved next year. No pressure. He makes it sound like it's a bad thing. It's a good thing. Unless you are lazy and you don't want to work then yeah don't join. Claims 
that what you are working on will kill everyone and must be stopped or paused, claims to want a maximally rigorous pursuit of the truth, but spews crazy conspiracy theories on his own social platform. At least this person admits that he likes Tesla cars, the rockets, and the solar panels, as well as the satellite network. Yeah, and for all the respect I have for your work, and as one of the few who convinced me to learn about machine learning more than 15 years ago, why don't you start your own AI company and try to do good staying at Meta and telling others they are wrong is a bit odd. You know, the company that sometimes censors people when it really matters. Oh, but I'm a scientist, not a business person or product person, says Yan. So yeah, of course, that gives them a pass to criticize everyone, right? So what science have you done in the past five years? And here he was set up for one of the dumbest things I've ever seen anyone say. Over 80 technical papers published since January 2022. What about you? Actually, sounds pretty good. 80 papers? Sounds like a lot, actually. Well, if it's not published, it's definitely not science. This is one of the dumbest things anyone has ever said. Does anyone know how many scientific papers Elon Musk has published about rockets, satellites, electric vehicles? How many? This is a great example how someone with supposedly a gigantic IQ can say something incredibly dumb publicly. To qualify as science, a piece of research must be correct and reproducible. You know, like things uh, being launched into space over and over and over again, many, many times. There were a few more exchanges. We also learned that Tesla doesn't use CNN so much these days. And now the big scientist is asking Elon, who obviously does no science, uh, how is he able to do this um, thing, which requires understanding of science. There's quite a bit of nuance in what Tesla is using and how it is doing. It's a bit technical, I'm not gonna go into it, but feel free to pause and read. If you really care about safety and you don't buy a Tesla, I don't think you really care about safety as much as you might think you do, because these cars are really safe. Not only if you do get into a crash, you are going to be safer than in other vehicles, but the chances of actually crashing are definitely lower, not just because of FSD and autopilot, but because it is a stable vehicle and the software, I'm sure, is helping to stabilize the vehicle here a little bit as well. Tesla's special loan rate is supposed to end now this Friday. We'll see if Tesla continues with something similar or maybe there could be a price cut. But I think with what we saw yesterday from AJ, him showing that he got a trade-in valuation about four months after he submitted a request for a trade-in vehicle. Four months later, Tesla contacts him with a much higher valuation for the same vehicle, about 10,000 more. That sort of tells me that Tesla is not planning to do more big price cuts. So I would be a bit surprised with a price cut. Now, AJ lives in Germany though, so not in the US. The markets could be a little bit different, but it's probably true across the globe to some degree. But lower financing rates, I do expect these. Speaking of the US, the future of electric vehicles will be made in America by union workers, uh, posted the president. Now, the reason why Sawyer is so confused about what's happening here is because he doesn't understand it's okay to make EVs at a giant loss forever because this is how you win. And uh, Faraday Future obviously is winning big. They just published today that they sold a total of six FF91 EV models and leased an additional six in all of 2023. Faraday recorded revenue of $784,000 in that period. Yeah, that company is now in the ICU. <laughs> oh, they're not gonna last, will they? Elon responded to the president, Biden cares a lot more about whether Tesla is unionized than whether Tesla is saving the environment. And I made a new exclusive video on Patreon good news for Tesla investors. Make sure to watch it before June ends. Not May, June. Better to watch it now. If you're a Patreon, I will see you there. If not, you're welcome to join. By joining Patreon, you will have access to all of my exclusive videos on Patreon, as well as how much I am willing to pay for each Tesla share between 2024 and 2033. If you join the investor tier, you will also have access to my valuation model, where you will see all of my assumptions, including deliveries, 
the energy business, Tesla's future businesses like FSD, and of course much more. And then if you want to easily download that and put in your own numbers, then this third tier is for you. To all of my Patreon supporters, thank you so much. Make sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't yet as well. It's really important to like the videos because that makes it less likely that the channel will be shadow banned later like my other big uh, channel got shadow banned before from about 50% of my regular viewers. Also remember that this Saturday I will not do a video on this channel but I will do a live stream on another channel on the Clips channel. There will be a link down below to subscribe to that channel if you don't want to miss the live stream on Saturday.